Good afternoon, boys and girls, wherever you may happen to be, and welcome to episode 121 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, coming to you from YouTube, and you know what I'm doing over here. I need to go on the tablet to make sure that everything is coming through fine. We have got the first comment already from Mr. Zanshin saying, shall I destroy my collection if none of mine are in the list? Well, why don't you tell us in, in a few minutes which ones of yours will be in the list? Anyway, what are we doing here, folks? This is a very, very special episode. It's another one of those uh, best of episodes that I've done, but this is the first time where I'm doing a best of episode and I'm joined by a very special guest. So what we're gonna be doing is looking at some of our favorite masculine perfumes of the last five years, but I need to reveal my guest. Now he is somebody who is, you know, in, in the world of YouTube, people who talk about per perfume on YouTube, uh, perfume critics on YouTube, I think it has to be said, and he's not allowed to say anything because he's not on screen yet. It has to be said that he is something of a star because he recently went over the 100,000 subscribers mark on YouTube. And I just checked a few minutes ago and already that 100,000 has turned to 112,000. So this is a guy with a massive following. He's been doing it for a very, very long time. Uh, he's, he's, he's developed a, uh, a, a very, very solid uh, reputation within the industry. He's very respected by his followers and by the industry. And we will, I will talk to you a little bit of, and, and with him about, about his work now, but I think the, first, the main thing I need to do is now just reveal who the mystery guest is. It is none other than Max Forty. Thank you so much for joining us today live, Max. It's uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for the kind words, for the the warm introduction. It's my pleasure to be here. Me and Darius talk, you know, off camera all the time. He's a fantastic, you know, creative mind. You know, very eloquent, very well spoken, and it's a pleasure to be here. This is this is this is where I pay you the compliments, Max, because you're on my channel. <laughs> but thank you very much. Now, some of you will be uh, aware that a few months ago, Max very kindly invited me onto his channel and interviewed me, and then he invited me back. So I guess I must have been a fairly okay guest. He invited me back, and we talked about some of our favorite perfumes of this year so far. And I will link to those uh, videos in the video description below, and uh, you will obviously also have a link to Max's channel. But, you know, I think the way this works is that you already know about Max's channel because he has 112,000 subscribers. But anyway, uh, where where are you today, Max? Because I want to say New York, but is that right? Well, I live in Connecticut, which is about an hour and 15 minutes from Manhattan. So that's where I am right now. And uh, yeah, the weather's nice. It's warm today. It's beautiful. Uh, you know, I don't know, Celsius, but it's about 85, 82 Fahrenheit. So it's a pretty warm day. The the joys of live broadcasting mean that one of you watching can now just quickly convert that and tell me, because I'm a Celsius boy, <laughs> tell, tell me what 85 Fahrenheit is in Celsius. But that sounds pretty warm. Now, a lot of comments coming through already. We would like this session to be as interactive as possible. And obviously, we want to hear from you what some of your favorite uh, masculines of the last five years are. We may not be able to include every single comment, but it's always really, really nice as well. If you don't mind revealing where you are, obviously you don't have to if you don't want to, but it's really, really fun if you tell us where you are watching from. Like, for example, Pema saying, hello from South Korea. It's midnight here. Glad to catch the live. Thank you so much for, for staying up, Pema. That's really kind. And David, all the way on the other side of the world, is saying morning from San Francisco. It's fantastic. Uh, Lorena is in South Germany. Abdel Sarkis says, hola uh, from Puerto Rico. Angela is not too far away <laughs> saying, hi everyone, what a lovely surprise. And I can play live today. And lots of, oh, by the way, Angela is saying that she is in Leeds in West Yorkshire. Mr. Zanshin is in Cleveland. Uh, Maria is in Spain, so so keep those comments. And Helsinki is here as well. That's, we have a truly, truly international audience, which is what makes this so fantastic. But we need to get on with the show, Mr. Forty. So the brief was, um, I had to choose five of my favorite masculines of the last five years, and Max had to choose five of his favorite masculines from, from the last five years. He doesn't know my choices. I don't know his choices. But if if one of our choices overlaps, I think that would be a miracle. It would be really, really cool. I'm not expecting that will happen, but but anyway, it might. But before we get into it, um, how did you how did you interpret this brief, Max? In the sense that did you just restrict your choices to perfumes that were 
overtly marketed as masculine or have you also maybe included a few ones that are sold as unisex? Absolutely. Great question. So I actually took in consideration, obviously, five years. So from 2015 until right now. So, you know, five year window. And I have some choices here that are most definitely unisex or gender free that everybody can enjoy. So I think uh, it's a pretty eclectic, pretty uh, nice uh, mix here. I don't think anything here. It's purely extremely masculine. So I think actually all five choices are pretty, uh, except for maybe one. I think everything is pretty much, uh, you know, shared. Okay, that's cool. And it's interesting because it sounds as though you and I kind of did the right thing. And and I, I'm looking at the selection here. And actually, I think every single one of my five is technically sold as a, as a unisex. But it, then it made me think about my choices. And I thought, okay, well, what do I personally mean by a masculine scent? Because regular viewers will know, and you will know, Max, as well, that I don't actually generally like playing the gender card in scents. And it, and it kind of annoys me that people sort of say, well, you know, that's only for women, that's only for men, whatever. So I guess for me, my interpretation was giving in a little bit to the stereotype and thinking about scents that maybe do tend towards the woody or the leathery or the smoky or maybe the fresh citrus i hate this word but you know what i mean sporty energetic that kind of thing because i thought okay well what do we kind of mean by masculine even though of course it, it, it could be it could be anything really I, I, I don't know if you want to come back on that one Sure, I completely agree with you. You know, we tend to think that normal things like vetiver or things that are earthy or woody or stronger in character has a quote unquote more masculine, uh, you know, characteristic. And then when you think about floral, citrus, you know, things that are a little more ethereal, more light in nature, we tend to think those floral citrus, um, you know, could be more feminine, like ylang ylang, you know, jasmine, those kind of things, rose. It's just a perception, but I agree with you, you know, a thousand percent. I think there's no gender. It's hard to, I don't like to characterize like that either. I think you wear what you love, whatever works with you. So I'm with you there. Perfect. And I just want to do a couple of hellos. Hikmat is saying hi and love from Pakistan. And Joao is saying hello to both from Paris. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm really fascinated by all the perfumes that Max has behind him. I like, as you know, I like to keep my backgrounds quite neutral, but all I want to do is actually kind of like reach in and take some of those perfumes out. Anyway. Enough of the introductions. You're going to take it away. What is your first choice, Mr. Forty? All right. So I'm a bit uh, tough with the, you know, chronologically. So this is not like on a top scale, like from, from worst to best, but I did on a chronological scale from 2015 and, and up, you know, to current. So the first choice here is going to be Dior Sauvage. No, it's not that at all. I'm just joking with you guys. I wanted to do that on purpose. It's not Dior Sauvage. Do I have a heart attack? <laughs> You know what? I was bracing. I'm kind of bracing myself thinking, what if there's going to be a scent that I've actually really put down on my chat? But but this is what it's about. You know, the, we are we are two different people. But <laughs> that was a good one, though. You got me there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the Air Sauvage. It's from Serge Off, and it's uh, 1861 collection, uh, which also has Renaissance, which is a great minty uh, floral kind of a fra fragrance. This is Naxos, which is a tobacco scent. It's resonant. It's a bit boozy. Very ambery, very uh, tobacco-ish. Um, I absolutely love this stuff. When I first smelled this, I, I remember was at a store in New York and I was just blown away. I just had to get the bottle. Um, I believe this is a vintage one. They have changed since a few times. I think uh, the juice also is a lot lighter these days. Then you have maceration. I don't want to get into that. But this is a fantastic you know, tobacco boozy uh, kind of a scent that just I absolutely love it. It's one of one of the best surge offs in my opinion. Have you tried this, uh, Darius? No, I haven't. And I think this, I, I'm, I'm fairly certain, I don't know if memory serves, but I'm thinking whether we talked about this when, when you interviewed me. One of the, the problems with the kind of work that we do here is that there are so many releases out there that, you know, I'm saying that it would be a miracle if one of our choices overlapped. I'm actually even wondering if we, we may find a situation where I have to say that I haven't like tried three of yours and you haven't tried two of mine, because it's, it's perfectly possible. There are so many out there. And Zerzhov is a brand, it, it is available in the UK, or it certainly was the last time I checked, but it isn't hugely on my radar. And I, I, I guess that's, you know, a little bit unfair. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I will obviously mention that one in, uh, in the video description below, and I will try and um, seek out a sample of it. But did you say which year it's from, Max? Because if you did, I, I didn't catch it. This 
2015. Okay. So yeah, 2015. It, was, okay. it was released around spring of 2015, the whole collection, the 1861. Um, and this is like, said a sweet uh, tonka vanilla cherry pipe tobacco kind of thing with a little boozy accord up top it's resinous it's spicy there's a bit of patchouli in here also it's awesome it's definitely one of my favorite creations from the house from the brand up to this point intoxicating that, 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 tobacco that does 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 sound does sound like the kind of thing that um, would be you know on on my on my radar uh let's do a few more comments and by the way um you know, please tell us what some of your favorite masculines of the last five years has been. Kath is saying, in Australia, past my bedtime, but glad I stayed up. It's worth it, Kath. So what if you're going to look like a wreck tomorrow? And look at this. Look at who's joined us as well, Mr. Forty. It's none other, <laughs> none other than Renaud Salmon. For those of you who don't know, Renaud is the Creative Experience Officer at Amouage. Um, Thank you very much for joining us. Feel free to tell us what some of your favorite masculines were. Sand Samurai saying hello from Scotland. Uh, somebody here appreciating your little Savage joke, Max. Uh, very funny, Mr. Forte says, Benjamin is saying hi from Scotland. You guys better have an amouage in there. Hmm? All will be revealed soon. We have got um, Floating Man saying hello from Malta. And then QQ saying, do you dress like this at home? We dress like this all the time. Of course we do. And... Um, Somebody saying hello to Reno. And Jeremy says, Zafiro is my favorite from 1861. And what else have we got here? Love Zafiro too. Okay. I, I don't actually know where to start, but I suppose maybe I will start with one of the oldest ones on my list as well. I am going to go from 2016, composed by Antoine Maisondieu. I am going to go Black Pepper from uh, Comme des Garçons. Um, I was I was I was just blown away by this. I'm 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 going to spray these as I go along because it just helps me to remind myself of them, Max. Um, except I don't see where the spray is. Um, I was just completely blown away by this when it came out. I have always liked uh, pepper, a, a strong black pepper note. Ah, oh, so good. I've always enjoyed uh, pepper note in perfumery, but anybody who's ever played around with essential oils, with perfumery materials, tried to do their, you know, their own kind of thing in the perfume world, um, will know that black pepper, that really authentic black pepper note, is very, very, very difficult to make long lasting. There was a very good pepper scent that came out from Mark Jacobs many years ago called Bang. That was a that was a good uh, pepper note. But again, it didn't last so long. And Antoine Maison Dieu, as far as I'm concerned, did something really, really amazing with black pepper um, in the sense that he kept the the photo real quality of the note, that kind of, you know, it, it always makes me feel like a waiter has come up to me at an Italian restaurant and sort of says, would you like me to, 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 to grind some black pepper onto your meal? He's kept that authenticity of it. Um, and, and it lasts for ages. I don't know whether that's, the, it must be through a, a very, very clever use of musks, but I also think that there's probably, um, you know, a cedar note in there. And if you say cedar, then that also usually means iso -E super, but whatever it is, his many, many, many years of experience um, brought him to the point where he was able to create this, this real technical feat. And I wore it again the other day in preparation for this video. And I was I was I was bowled over by it all over again. So I have to say to you, have you tried this? And if so, what do you think of it? I haven't tried that one. I, I do really appreciate the house of uh, of Combing the Garçon. I think they're very underrated brand. Not much talks on on YouTube at all. Uh, there's a few that I love. Floriental is really good. The the Ohm one, which is the original, it's a yellow juice juice with a clear bottle. It's very potent. It's like a honey animalistic kind of a you know fougere. I think the brand is fantastic. Uh, there's one called Wonderwood that's really good as well. So I, I think it's a very underrated brand and it's good to bring it to light. So yeah, I haven't tried that one, but I'm very curious because I do love the authentic authenticity of the black pepper that you mentioned on Mark Jacobs, which I, I did own that bang fragrance, which was amazing. But you know, sadly, it only lasted for about three hours or so. But the, the initial opening of that was just out of this world good. The pepper was so natural. And I'm hoping that maybe some niche companies will take that DNA and make it into something outstanding. 
the, and it's interesting, this transatlantic thing, I'm thinking, I, I don't know about you guys, I, know, I don't know about Max, but I'm thinking we need to do this more often. The transatlantic thing is interesting because you're saying it's an underrated brand in the US or maybe on the east coast of the US. It, it, it is very highly regarded in the UK, um, not, not necessarily in a mainstream sense because it, it does still have that kind of niche edgy quality, but it is, it is most certainly highly regarded. I should say, you won't be aware of this, Max, because you don't see the comments coming through, but there's there's uh, people having having some fun at Renault Salmon's expense. He's saying, he's saying, um, uh, what was it? Hang on, what was it? No, that's that's not the one. Sorry. It's oh he's he's saying that he's here to write down the top ten and create copies, obviously. <laughs> well, if you do anything like that, this is this is video evidence of, of where these ideas came from. Um, Hikmat is saying Aramis, Aramis, but we're talking about sense from the last five years, guys, okay? Aramis is kind of going back a little bit further than five years. What do you want to say, Max? I want to say to Renaud Simon, please take notes on that black pepper and try to come up with something with black pepper and frankincense, something really mysterious, maybe boozy as well, but really emphasize that black pepper. I think that would be an outstanding creation. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Zanshin is saying 1861 is from 2015. Good grief, Lothia. Yeah. Okay. Um, we should move on. What's your second choice, sir? Sure. So my second choice is going to be from a designer house. I think it's the only designer here on this list. And it's a house that I think, or a brand, or, you know, a designer that needs some love right now because over the past four years or so, they've been doing some really good work. And this is going to be Noir Umbra from Isimiyaki. I don't know if you had the pleasure to try. I think it was an exclusive to Dubai or that Middle Eastern market. And those releases to that market is just incredible. Uh, there's one, I think it's called um, Ansans, which is a very, you know, incense based one. This is basically a leathery. Uh, incense, uh, amber, some spiciness, there's some vetiver here also. So it's smoky, it's leathery. I'm going to do what you do. I'm going to actually spray a little bit here. So yeah, yeah, go for it. Kind of trigger my memory here a little bit. Um, yeah, it, it's outstanding. Also has almost like a boozy, like a rum effect in the beginning. Very spicy, very smooth, very leathery, a little smoky, it's very well balanced. It's something that I would like if somebody sprayed this on the bladder and gave it to me to smell, I would think niche right away. You know, it's just very creative. Nothing like you would smell on the on a general store, you know, designer counter. Just outstanding good. Just just incredible. Great creation. I don't know who the nose behind this is, but this is definitely one of my favorite creations over the past five years, hands down. See, my I, I love my viewers because because they um they they know my facial expression so well because Gavin. You are right. Gavin is saying Persilace hasn't tried this one either. Lol. <laughs> um, no, I haven't. This is this is interesting. Lots, lots for me to try here. I have to ask you, Max. It, it, is the original L'Odyssée pour Homme signature in there, or have they not even kind of tried to do that? Is it just a completely different beast? No. The funny thing is that this is a quote-unquote flanker from that line, but this is a totally different genre, going a totally different direction completely out of left field. Like like I said, if you would smell this, you would never think L'Odyssée pour Homme. This is like, you know, totally different kind of scent DNA. They could have released this as a new release altogether because it has nothing to do with that, with that fragrance. It's like a, this is an oriental spicy, you know? Okay, okay, that makes sense. Uh, uh, Renaud has made a note of your comments. So you're saying it here, you, you, you've you immortalized yourself here now, Monsieur Salmon. Um, and the other one as well, we have Tina saying that her favorite is T-Rex from Zoologist. And actually, thank you for mentioning Zoologist because that's certainly a brand from the last few years that has been one of the most out there, interesting brands in terms of creations. Uh, Hikmat says, I have this Ombre Noir and Ghana compliments. Nice pick. So there you go. At least somebody out there, somebody in Pakistan's tried, <laughs> tried one of your choices. So that's good. Okay, thank you very much for that one, Max. I'm going to move on. I should also just take 30 seconds because somebody wrote to me and asked, this is a kind of very technical, geeky question, about why I seem to be looking in different places when I do these interview videos. That's because, you know, I have to kind of make the best that I, do the best that I can in this home studio setup. And so to look at the camera, to make it look as though I'm looking at you, I have to do this and look here. But when I'm doing that, I can't see anything else. So to see Max 
and to see the comments that you're leaving, I need to kind of do this thing, which makes it look weird. So that, that's all it is. It's just, you know, that this is modern technology. Oh, Joao says that his favorite is Nine Arcana Rosa from Lattison Parfumeur. That, that's an interesting range, that one from Lattison, isn't it? And, and that's one that, that hasn't been given a huge amount of attention. So thank you for that, Joao. Okay, I don't know where to go next. I think I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go 2018. And regular viewers will probably not be surprised that this is on here because again, this was another one that was immediate love at first uh, smell, love at first scent for me. This is Papyrus Oud, or I should say Papyrus Oud 71 from Parlement de Parfum, a fairly new brand. This was a brand that was set up by uh, Michel Almarac, legendary perfumer Michel, Ar Michel Almarac and his sons. But the interesting story about this one is that Michel Almarac was responsible, was the nose for the Gucci pour homme from the days when Tom Ford was creative director at Gucci. And if you remember that gorgeous, gorgeous Gucci pour homme scent that was just like this perfect alignment of pink pepper and incense and amber and cedar, um, that got discontinued. It was, it was. What, I mean, I, I wore that perfume to death and I used the shower gel and I used the aftershave by and all the rest of it. And then along came Michel Almarac and when he set up his own brand, he created this and he just added a, a touch of oud. It really, really is a touch of oud. I mean, for me, this is like the original. It feels a bit like, you know, it feels like the original with maybe just a bit more heat when I wear it, I'm transported back to the time of wearing Gucci pour homme. So this this absolutely um, had to be on there. And I'm almost too scared to ask, Max, have you tried this one? So here's the thing. I have not heard of the brand, nor have I tried this creation, but I must because I do love Gucci pour homme. In fact, I think I have a a partial 100 mil and a full 50 mil still in my collection of retro stuff, which I never wear or wear very gingerly on special occasions just because, like you said, it's discontinued. So now I must procure that bottle there because I want to be able to be transported to the times I wore that fragrance so much and maybe have an alternative to that fragrance I love so much. So thanks for putting me onto this. No, I, 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 just, I just love this stuff. And, and like I say, there's something, you know, there, there's something uh, that when perfumers achieve just this perfect equilibrium between certain elements because it's almost like the, the perfumer kind of drew a cross on a piece of paper and sort of went pink pepper, incense, amber, cedar, and just, just sort of brought the four together so that you can smell the four separately, but also somehow create smell the effect that they create. It's, it's church-like, it's ecclesiastical, but it's also really really sensual super sophisticated um it, it it is wonderful and madame Perselaise loves it she she always loved the original gucci pour homme but but we have a dissenter which is fine by the way you are allowed to disagree jazz bob says papyrus oud didn't work for me sorry smelled like a very dry piece of wood from a hardware store plus incense but you see you describe it like that and i think wow that sounds like a really good smell <laughs> <laughs> But no, fair enough, fair enough. And Cole says, Parlement de Parfum, Mile High is up there for me. That's one of their new releases, a pineapple, which I haven't tried yet. But I've got Papyrus Oud on my Christmas list. As far as I'm aware, Max, in the US, I believe they are stocked by Lucky Scent, which is, of course, over on the West Coast. Uh, but I don't know who else stocks them. And uh, Flaconess is saying, Parlement de Parfum, great choice. Okay. We're at the 24 minute mark. I need to hear your third one. All right, so speaking of sensual, you mentioned sensual about that fragrance. So I'm gonna give you a sensual choice here. From 2016 as well, just like the Isimiyaki, this is going to be from MFK and this is going to be Grand Soir. Now Grand Soir- I've tried that one, I've tried that one, yes. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Go on. Wow, this, this is to me, this is a masterpiece, I mean, resinous sweet almost syrupy but also smoky resinous i think there might be a hint of oud here i do get a little bit of uh like sort of uh oudy kind of a uh, vibe here but it's just outstanding it's one of those fragrances whenever i wear this it makes me feel great it's very unique very exotic um just outstanding creation i almost get like a honey honey facet accord here as well 
Incredible. Incredible. Love this stuff. I don't know if you've tried. I'm sure you've tried this one. You have got one person at least agreeing with you saying, Pema saying, I love Grand Soir. So that's great. Um, I, I have tried it. I have tried it. I mean, I, I, I don't think, well, I know I didn't love it as much as you love it, but, it, but again, you know, I, I, I completely see where you're, where you're coming from and I can see why you would uh, really rate it highly and why you would like it. We've got another comment from Chang going back to Parlement de Parfum, who's saying, I like Milky Musk, which is another Parlement de Parfum perfume, great sandalwood. And Tina is saying, agree on Grand Soir. So you've got, you've got two people at least on your side here. But Jazz Bob is going back to the comment about papyrus oud saying it was too dry for his taste. Fair enough. For me, in papyrus oud, it's the amber that kind of sweetens things up a little bit. Max, you go for it. Go on. Luca Turin, I know on his book, he actually bashes this. He says it's like it doesn't know what it wants to do. Like somebody's, you know, this it says it's too dry and kind of like, you know, it's a little confusing for his taste or whatever. I don't remember the exact adjectives or, or you know, how he knocked it, but he said it was not a good. I think he gave like a two star or something. You know, I love it. It works for me. Yes, but, but but this is how it goes, isn't it? I mean, you know, I, there, there are a few five-star reviews from Luca Turin and Tanya Sanchez that I think really five stars and, 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 and the other way around. Uh, Flaconess says, Grand Soir is far better than Baccarat Rouge 540. I love it. See, I'm, I'm not a fan of the Baccarat. I don't know if you are, Max. Have you tried the... It's been played out, and I think it's not as intricate, exotic, or you know, a creative masterpiece like this right here. I think it's been played out. Everyone's doing it now. It's like a, you know, designers, celebrities, it's going to be all over the place. And it is good, but I don't think it's as good as people make it up to be. And that goes for Aventus as well. Um, I know we're going to get some flack for this. How you doing? But Grand Soir, Grand Soir is really, really good, guys. If you haven't tried it, do try it. We'll, we'll we'll just we'll just ignore that he mentioned the a word, shall we? We just we'll just move on from there. We'll move on. Thank you very much for that one. Okay, my third one. My third one is probably because I'm kind of looking at them, thinking, oh, okay, they do kind of head towards ambery, incensey, smoky, spicy territories. But oh, okay, somebody else is going to say it for me. <laughs> I'm not saying a word, but I don't disagree. And Olfactive says, don't worry, you're allowed to have an opinion here. Yes, absolutely. We are joking around, but some opinions are just wrong. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. This is my next one. It's Boy from Chanel. This is kind of, this is this is sort of probably the the, the most translucent, the, the lightest, the most sheer one on my list. I, I love Boy. I think Boy was very much underrated. This is from 2016, put together by Olivier Polge, of course, who's the current in-house perfumer. And Chanel, he took over from his father, Jacques Polge. I thought that this was really tender. You know, ten tenderness, I think, is an underrated quality or an underused quality in perfumes that are aimed for men. A few years ago, I had the immense, immense, huge privilege of uh, visiting the Osmotech in Versailles, which is a kind of archive of uh the, the, the main perfumes throughout history. And those perfumes are stored there in their original formulas as far as possible. And I had uh, the honor and the pleasure of smelling the original Fougère Royale. And I was just so stunned by the fact that it was actually so, so tender. It was actually soft. It was gentle. Um, and it, it's that, it's it, it, it sometimes when perfumes that maybe play a masculine card, but actually allow themselves to bring out the softer sides of masculinity, the sweeter sides of masculinity. I think they're very, very interesting. And, and, and Boy completely does that. I mean, it is, it, 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 in, term, in terms of structure, it's a kind of herbal lavender. So I guess that takes it into Fougere territory, but, but, but the, the herbs aren't ever super dry or super bitter. Some people complained that, that they didn't last very long, that it was too soapy, uh, that it didn't project very much, but I think the whole idea of it was that it was a scent that was meant to be close to the skin. It was a scent that you had to, you know, approach and get up close to before you could appreciate its beauty. Um, I've, I've always, always enjoyed wearing it and I'm smelling it now and it's got a kind of powdery quality to it, maybe a sort of rosy quality, definitely some kind of green cut grass thing happening there. It smells very, very natural, very outdoorsy. Um, but also 
calm, peaceful, serene, and 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 really very much underappreciated, I think. Do you know this one, Max? Absolutely, I own that one. Uh, it's behind me here somewhere. Let me see. Oh, cool. Here it is, that one I can actually grab it. Here it is. Um, actually, I put a little dent into this bottle. I actually love to wear this uh, in springtime. Like you said, it has an understated, a subtle quality to it. It's a little bit powdery. I get a little bit of an aldehylic feel, which is very common to the Chanel creations. I think there's a little bit of a violet feel here as well, which gives it a touch of bitterness, some herbal qualities. I think it's a really great modern day fougere fragrance. You know, like I said, very classy, very smooth, uh, understated quality, subtle uh, nuances about it. I really enjoy it. It's not one of my picks, but I do love it. And it's definitely one of my you know, most reached out for springtime. I think it's the floral qualities for me here where the weathers are, you know, the seasons are very, you know, you know, pinpointed here. I think this is great for springtime. It just screams, screams spring in my skin. I love it. Really good stuff. Great pick. Fantastic. FW saying, boy, great choice. Modern lightweight fougere. Love it. Uh, Hikmat is saying, boy, is a great choice. So thanks very much for that, Hikmat. An interesting comment from Jazz Bob. Boy might be the olfactory answer to toxic masculinity. I guess by that you mean as a kind of as an antidote to toxic masculinity, right? Because it kind of sort of tox uh, cuts through that. And uh, JW actually says, "Absolutely love boy. It's my fragrance of the day today." Amazing. <laughs> um, Jamal says, "Every boy had brute, and every man should have Chanel boy." I like it. That's very very good. Um, what's this one? Lannan says, sweet fragrances smell better on my husband. Dry spice works on me. Masculine femme is how you wear it, not how it wears you. Very, very good point. Uh, Jira is saying, what about Toy Boy from Moschino? Well, I can tell you that Toy Boy is not on my list, even though I, I really, really rate it very highly. I, I do like it, but it's not on Max's list either. Okay, time is, time is, a, time is a flying. What's choice number four, Max? All right, so for those that know me, I love fougeres, but I also love vetiver fragrances that are very uh, predominant vetiver. The last two choices without, you know what, I'm not going to talk about the last one. But this one here is one of my favorite perfumers of now. Uh, it's a woman. Her name is Cecile Zerokian. And the fragrance at hand is a fragrance from Javoy, and it's going to be Incident Diplomatique. I'm going to spray it on a card here to remind myself of this beautiful creation. Definitely, uh, 2017 was the year it was introduced. And by the way, Javoy is another brand that doesn't really get, get much play on YouTube or on you know anywhere. And it's an outstanding brand. This is, uh, I think it's got a couple different kinds of uh, vetiver. I think there's Haitian vetiver, uh, Javanese vetiver. You definitely get the smokiness, um, but there's also a fruitiness about it. You know, that's very sophisticated. Just an outstanding modern day, you know, vetiver fragrance. If you're looking for, you know, a vetiver to wear as a signature scent, something that's really going to make you stand out, this stuff here is absolutely quality. And Cecile Zerokin just nailed it. To me, it's like one of the best creations over the past five years. You know, definitely <clears throat> one of my favorites. Incredible. I don't know if you had the pleasure to try this. No, not not that one. I've managed to um, <clears throat> I've managed to sort of stay pretty much up to date with uh, with a lot of Jouvoy releases, but not that one. Uh, the, for for those of you who may not be aware, Jouvoy isn't just a brand; it's also uh, a, a kind of growing chain of perfumery shops. Um, they but they I, I think they started as, as a shop in Paris and then um, stocking lots of other brands. And there's one in uh, there's a Jouvoy in London. Um, and they also have their own brand. And some of you may be aware of a brand called Jeroboam, um, based around musks. And that also is, is a Javoy brand. The owner of the shops is also the creative force behind the brand, a Frenchman called François Enna, who I would love to be able to interview on, on, on this channel because um, he's, a, he's a fascinating guy. Um, oh, but Jazz Bob wants to disagree with something. He's saying Cécile Zerachion did private label a diplomatic incident, he's saying, was made by Vanina Muracholi. So maybe we need to check that out. Okay. Do you think that? Let me, let me check we'll, real quick. We'll find out. We'll find out. And JW says, I'd love to see Cecile Zerokion doing a fragrance for Frederick Mal. That would be interesting. Oh, that would be interesting. I'd and love to uh, Lorena says, I didn't know Javoy rhymed with boy. Yes, and I totally have it on 
the the brand founder's authority, okay? Because you you may think that actually you're meant to say Jovois or something like that, but he says no, because it goes back to an old Russian surname that has been Frenchified, we are meant to say Jovois. Uh, so there we go. Did you manage to find out, Max? Or Yes, I do apologize. Uh, the, the viewer was correct. Venina Muracciole was the nose behind this particular fragrance. I apologize. Private label was Cecile Zerokian, which, by the way, I'd love to see her work with Amouage as well. I think they could do some outstanding creations. But yes, this is great. Cecile's very first creation ever in her career was for Amouage. Oh, that's right. Epic Woman. Epic Woman. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She did. Absolutely. Um, and Lorena is saying... Thank you for the etymological elucidation. Thank you for making me say that. But that, that's why I, that's why I love my viewers because you know they keep you on your toes. They're like, no, 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 no. That was not Cecile Zerokin, <laughs> but it's all good. And Renault is saying, love Cecile. I think that's a hint. I think maybe that's a hint that he's working on something with her. Um, okay, I'm gonna go next because we 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 want to be done at about the three quarters of an hour mark. And you know what? Let's do it. Renault is watching. He's just commented. This is my uh, fourth choice. Uh, okay, Renault, it, it's not one of yours yet, but then, you know, you haven't been in there that long. This is Opus 11 from Amouage, uh, the most recent and maybe even the final uh, addition to the library collection back from when Christopher Chong was the creative director at the brand. Uh, the library collection as a collection is extremely strong. And this has just got Persilase's name written all over it. I think this fragrance came as, at, a, at a very interesting time because it, it came at a point which was 2018, he says, looking at his list. Yes, it came in 2018 when the whole oud thing was um, really starting to come across as a little bit tired and, and cliched and hackneyed by a lot of people. But then what that means is that brands could really, really start doing some interesting things with the note and uh, letting rip and having a kind of no holds barred approach and this is like somebody's actually said it for me here benjamin is saying opus 11 is a powerhouse oud like no other Th this is almost like a kind of it was made by pierre negrin by the way who of course also made interlude man and the interlude man flanker black iris for amouage um this is like a kind of you want oud i'll give you oud and then some um even though it isn't also actually just oud. I mean, the, I, I don't particularly really imagine oud here when I smell this, but I imagine like rocket fuel. I imagine like this countdown with this rocket about to blast off into space. And I don't know about you, but for me, it's always Cape Canaveral. Does everyone always just think of Cape Canaveral when they think of a rocket blasting off? You see the reds and the oranges and the blacks of the smoke and you hear this rumbling and you feel the vibration and you kind of go oh my god you know she's gonna blow she's gonna blow and and that is this scent it is this hurricane this contained storm and then it just takes off and you know everybody's watching it's it's something else and it's that strange herbal tarragony leathery note in there that just makes this such a standout. I mean, I mean, you know, I'm on the verge of finishing this bottle, I think, but, you know, I, Opus 11 is one of these ones that I could never be, um, never be without. Uh, let me know if you've smelt it, Max, while I see if there are some comments coming through about it. Have you tried this one? No, I haven't had the pleasure to try that one. In fact, if you look up here on this corner here, there's a whole bunch of amouages over there. And I do, I, I don't know if you guys can see it. It's right over here, up here. So I have pretty much everything masculine from, from Amouage, except for maybe one or two. But when it comes to the library collection, it's a collection that I really never uh, delve into. So I always thought from smelling some of them in the past that they were a little too much floral nuances to them that didn't work with my skin so i just you know stayed with the, with the masculine releases for the most part i share some feminine releases with my wife but for the most part for my personal collection I, I never really got into the library collection but i would love to try that one it seems like it's a nuclear uh you know very powerful oud kind of a scent which normally i don't love ouds as you'll see there's no oud picks here in in these five picks here but um 
I would love to try it. I'm definitely, your nose changes a little bit for the most part. You know, you have like your core, you know, appreciation or the classifications or genres that you love the most, but you know, it's always changing. You're always, you know, learning new things. So I'm, I'm diving into better ouds and this is something that sounds incredible and I'd love to try it. It, it, it is a beast. It is a beast. It needs, it needs to come with a, with a warning. Actually, it reminds me of many years ago, uh, seriously, many years ago, maybe like nine years ago, I, I took a friend to the uh, Amouage Boutique in London that doesn't exist anymore. It was, without any question for me, the most beautiful perfume boutique in London, and it's closed now, so the, the, the prize for most beautiful perfume boutique in London is up for grabs. Go for it, Max, what do you wanna say? Do you have a signature scent today? Do you have like a scent of the day that you picked for the day? Me? Yes. Uh, I was wearing, I was wearing actually, and this is true, I was wearing Meander from the new Renaissance collection for Amouage. I was but gonna what, say, what, what, go on. The, bot the bottle matches your shirt and your tie. Maybe you should pick that one, but you're already wearing something today, so you're good. <laughs> <laughs> but where, where I was going with that story was that I took this friend because he had never smelt oud. And they used to smell these very, very, sorry, they used to sell these very high quality oud oils in the, um, uh, in the Amouage boutique. And he smelt it. And I'll never forget, he said, he said, oh my goodness, this is a righteous infliction. And I thought that is a really good description, actually, of a, of a good oud. Um, we're we're going to move on, but Renault, in relation to my comment about working with Cecile Zerakian, has just said, "Shh, you're giving it away, Renault. You're giving it away too much." Real men, real style says, "Such a great broadcast. Love this. Thank you very much for taking the time to say that. That's very, very kind." And um, Tina says, "Is it reminiscent of the night? No, because the night has a strong rose note. Yeah, so." The night from Frederick Mal is like portrait of a lady with oud. This doesn't do that much of a floral thing. Um, and uh, I missed one comment actually that I wanted to share, but never mind. I think I think we probably need to move on. I'll, I'll probably find it. Yeah, you you go you go for it, Max, and also give us your fifth choice. Sure, real quickly, Antonio Santino, I want to say hello to you from Real Man Real Style. He's here taking notes because I know he's coming out with his own fragrance line, so that's why he's here checking us out. <laughs> just a rule, just for fun. Anyway, my next pick here is going to be this is from Cecile Zarok, and you guys can check the, the perfumer. I know for sure. This is Nishani Ani. To me, an outstanding vanilla. You talk about powerhouse ouds. This is a powerhouse vanilla. You know, when it comes to outstanding vanillas, this is green, it's aromatic, it's spicy, it's creamy. There's sandalwood, cardamom. This takes me on a journey. It's incredible from beginning to end. Another modern day masterpiece, you know, Cecile Zerokin. This this shows her, you know, the quality of her nose, her expertise, and how much she has grown. This is just a, a, a very talented um, composition, guys. If you love vanilla, if you love spicy compositions, this is something that just blew my mind. I, I tried this at Asans 2019. I believe it was released at Asans 2019. Mm -hmm. So I had the pleasure to try it when it was launched, and I just had to get a bottle. This stuff is just incredible always wears a lot of this stuff when it's colder out just works with my body chemistry it's one of those fragrances that always gets people asking me what are you wearing you know it's one of those very intriguing kind of scents it's got some resin some some floral components like rose benzoin patchouli the sandalwood the vanilla the spicy cardamom gives this really green almost boozy um it's just outstandingly good i just love nishani i think one of the best creations from Nishani and definitely one of my favorite vanillas of all time. You're really selling it, Max. Now, I know the brand, it's a Turkish brand, right? But I'm really sorry, what's the actual name of the perfume? Anik. Anik. No, Anik. Oh, Anik, Anik, A-N-I, Anik. Okay, right, right, right. Excellent, okay. I'm gonna ask you to email me the names of all of the perfumes anyway, in case I missed it. That sounds sure. good. And look, Real Men Real Style says, thanks for the shout out, Max. Yeah, you're checking us out, aren't you? You're taking notes. We want to be on commission. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, Melek says, no, I missed that one. Melek says, I'm so happy to catch you guys live. Thank you very much for watching. And Flakaness says, it's so much fun watching you two. You should do more live streams together. I completely agree because I think if you're having fun watching, it's because we're having fun doing it. But we're down to the last one. And my last one, I wonder if I'm right, right? You've done five, haven't you, Max? We haven't miscounted. Yeah. Yes. And my last one. This again was one that I just thought, oh my God, where has this fragrance been all my life? And it's interesting because somebody in the comments earlier mentioned, oh, I know, hang on, I need to do this. 
Real Men Real Style says, send me the invoice. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. Okay, somebody mentioned Anteus from Chanel, which brings me very neatly to this. This is Testa di Moro from Salvatore Ferragamo. And I, I talked about it in a video, I think, but I also did a written review over on the blog, over on personalize.com. Because to me, this is like, uh, this is like a perfumer saying, okay, if I had to make something like Chanel Anteus now, which, which would be for the sort of more, slightly more modern taste for a more modern palette, what, what, how would I make it? Because I, I love Anteus. Anteus from Chanel is one of my all time favorites, but I do feel that it is very much a product of the 80s. And sometimes when I wear it, which I, which I do still, I, I do feel like I'm maybe kind of walking in a kind of time warp. But here, uh, the perfumer Fabrice Pellegrin, this was released in 2018, by the way. I, you know, this is pure speculation on my part, because for all I know, he didn't have Anteus on his mind at all. But it feels like taking that big leather, beeswax, smoky, resinous feel of Anteus um, and just smoothing out the edges, maybe toning down the harshness of the leather. I don't know whether Chanel Anteus uses a prominent dose of isobutyl quinoline, but it certainly feels like it, that really, really biting, rasping, bitter leather that you get from like uh, Bondi from Piguet. So this th this is really like um, the edges have been smoothed out, the, 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 the roughness has been smoothed out. And it it's just, you know, we use the word swoon worthy so often to describe perfumes, but this really is, this is like, th th this has the kind of got the virility and the and the authoritativeness um, of of masculinity, but also that that softness, that tenderness, and it, it, it's, it's not all that well known because it's from the sort of exclusive Ferragamo line. And because that means that it's not in many retail outlets, like I think in the UK, it's maybe Harrods only, and maybe Ferragamo boutiques, not many people are aware of it. But um, do you know it, Max? I'm guessing, you, do you know this one? Yeah. No, I have not tried that one. I've tried maybe a couple fragrances from that Salvatore Ferragamo uh, more prestigious line, which has a name. I can't remember now. It escapes my mind. They have a name for that collection. They do, um, they do. Tuscan, no, not Tuscan, but there's something, there's something Italian-y about the name something of the... Like, that, like this Tuscan collection or something. There's like a, a, you know, a name about it, but I can't remember. But anyway, it is a very good collection. Not as easy to find, as you said, it, you know, especially here in America. We can't, it's mostly like in Europe. We can't really find it here, uh, but it's one line that I want to get more into it. And like you said, Anthea's is a hair chested 80s kind of fragrance. Both of these bottles are old and vintage, and I absolutely love this stuff. It's definitely in my top 10 best designers releases of all time you know i think there's castorium in there there's some something animalistic but it's 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 mesmerizing it's one of those fragrances that when you wear like you said it takes you on a, on a, on a time warp it just brings back memories it reminds me of my father you know uh, my uncles it's just a great scent but if they did a modern version of that which made it smoother and more wearable to, to, to these times i would love to try that and please do send these names for me especially uh your top choice there because i, I want to try it for sure we have some disagreement amongst the viewers because etherealist says tuscan soul and to me i think that sounds right but floating man says tuscan creations vahush says tuscan creations cole says tuscan creations so i don't know <laughs> look it up folks put in <laughs> tuscan and soul and creations at ferragama and you'll find it um hikmat says have to go to hospital. We'll watch later. Love you both. Sending you good thoughts. I hope it's not like a, a, a sad reason why you're going into hospital. Maybe you work at the hospital. I don't know. Um, Floating Man says, does this one have strong animalics like Castorium? Animalics, yes, for sure. But strong, I think that's the thing about that is that everything here is made just a little bit more refined, a little bit more sophisticated. But, you know, it may also be that you may smell this and think, wow, this is extremely strong animalics. Whereas, you know, I may not take it that way. Okay, we need to let these good people go, Max. Um, is there anything you want to say as, as a kind of, you know, final roundup to, to sum up your five choices or just some sort of closing words or something like that? 
Sure. So as you can see with my choices, I think over the past five years, I tend to lean more towards the oriental spicy vanillas. I think that that's kind of like summarize except, you know, except for one, which is the vetiver one. Everything else is a lot of vanilla, benzoin, some spices, some uh, incense quality to it, smokiness to it. I think that's kind of like the stuff that I really lean towards over the past five years or so. Pleasure to be here. Awesome. You guys are great. Thanks for having me. Uh, Persilase, Darius, you know, you know, I love you. And it's a pleasure to be here anytime you guys want me to come here and grace yourselves with my my silly presence. I'm game. And spray some Sauvage. Seriously, Max, thank you very much for doing this. Thank you very much for being a good sport. I know that you don't normally do live videos and, and it can be a little bit nerve wracking if you haven't done a live one first. But like I said, I have the best um, viewers in, in the world and they just carry us. They, they help us along and they make us laugh. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Go for it, Max. To be honest, I do enjoy live better than recording because I think this is more raw. You can really show who you really are. I think people can really understand you a little bit better. You know, you're actually looking at somebody, even though you're not really, instead of just looking into a camera that's kind of cold. I do enjoy lives. I, I do enjoy it. No, not nerve wracking at all, especially with your, your great host. That's very, very sweet. Thank you. And lots of hellos coming through. By the way, just the, the, the comments that I'm bringing up are only just a few that I'm choosing. If you're watching the recording, um, you can click on the live chat button and you will see all of the comments that everybody's left. And if you're if you're watching the recording, feel free to leave a comment, ask a question. I will try to answer them as quickly as possible. And I guess Max will, you know, also look at the comments and see what um, what, what people are writing. But we've got lots and lots of um, thank you, see JW saying fantastic broadcast. Thank you. Tina saying thank you, guys. Watermelon Antique, that's a great name, saying wonderful live event. Thank you. Angela, definitely a pleasure having Max Forty as a guest. Uh, live stream rules, says Lorenia. Chang saying, really cool to see you both, thank you. And Kathy saying, great episode. I think they liked it, Max. Seriously, thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. Special thank you to you, Max. And to the rest of you, please just stay tuned to my social media channels for details of uh, the next episode of Love at First Scent. But until then, be good, take care, stay safe, See you soon. Bye, everyone.